It was well, good. I, I, I love how this place has turned into an arcade. I know, I don't know what that happened. With one game and an audience. <laughs> you know, oddly enough, I actually, I actually saw this outside of Mel's Diner on Saturday night. I was just getting a, a French, you know, French dip and two dudes, flames on their fists. I don't know, I got next. Yeah. What up? Wow, you put all three quarters? See, right there's the best case for the dollar coin. So that, you know, when you have next, you don't have to put a series of chains right. up there for today's high price mm. video game. All right, hello and welcome to X-Play. This is, yeah. thank you. It is a good show. TV's uh, most watched video game show. I'm Morgan Webb. I'm Adam Sesser. Yeah. We're having a huge show for you today. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. Now coming up, we've got an epic two-part review of Killzone 2. Oh, yeah. I know, there is going to be an overture and an intermission. Take that, David Lean. Now, if that's not enough, we got a brand new two-part look at all the new characters in Street Fighter 4. And if you are in need of a bunch of useless, gaudy crap sent to us by video game companies, you can get it all from the Home Swag Network. And we've asked for the glory of PC gaming and show you some of the best mods for Fallout 3. Lightsabers, anyone? I'll take it! I'll take one. I'll take it! One. But first, the game PS3 owners have been pining for. Now, from the early CG trailers to missed release windows, kills are too sad and bumpy ride. Yeah, it has been the source of numerous flame wars. I think the internet is on fire from this game. It seems the entire fate of the PlayStation 3 is resting on this shooter. Yeah, no pressure. What's wrong? Mm. But let's put the drama aside and dive into the game. Here is the first part of our review, focusing on the campaign. Okay, people, let's get done. Good news, PlayStation 3 owners. You finally have something to spend your money on besides Heavenly Sword action figures and antidepressants. It's Killzone 2, a game that's enjoyed the most eagerly watched development since the Olsen twins. Since this first half of our review focuses on the campaign mode, we should probably explain what the hell's going on. The first kill zone was all about defending your world from the evil alien scum, the Hellgast. In this installment, you're actually taking the fight to them on their home planet of, drumroll please, Helgon. I hear it's really nice this time of year. Hey guys, are you look cold? I am cold! Unfortunately, our intelligence isn't as good as it should be. This is and when we show up, our enemy fights back in unpredictable, dangerous ways. So basically, it's like the Iraq War, except this time, we're space marines. We are very happy to report that all the major problems of the first game have been fixed. The AI is much smarter, and your gun seems to have a convincing heft to it. There's an attention to detail here that puts part one to shame. Also, we found ourselves liking new gameplay elements. Killzone 2 essentially limits you to carrying one major weapon at a time. Now that may sound like a Kirstie Alley sized pain in the ass, but it actually forces you to try out new weapons and increase the strategy. The graphics aren't an exact match of what was seen in earlier trailers, but believe us, we aren't complaining. Subtle cues, vivid textures, and a ton of purdy lighting effects combine to form one of the best looking next gen games, period. Campaign mode length lies in the standard 10 hour ballpark, plus some extra time if you insist on playing it over again on the hardest difficulty. And we're not sure if this counts as a complaint, but we have to point out that Killzone 2 should be a co-op experience. Since your AI squad mates often drop the ball, that was close. the game would be exponentially better with the ability to enjoy it alongside friends. All that, and we haven't even talked about multiplayer mode yet. We'll have our full report on that, plus our opinion of the game in hotly anticipated numerical format later on in the show. Bring your abacus. Ah, it's a cliffhanger. What's going to happen? Like, I don't know. I'm sure there's plenty of you considering buying Street Fighter 4 yet. Haven't touched the series since the days of the SNES. So when you see the character selection screen, you might yell, who the hell are these people? Did I buy a Dragon Ball Z game on accident? Knowing you might be confused, we have an all-access preview of the new fighters. Every time there's a new Street Fighter character, it's like a Christmas morning. Tweaked out, existential, greatest fighters in the world. We're bringing back all of your old favorites, and we've also got people returning from the Alpha series. I hope you're ready for a beat. We've got four brand new ones in uh, Abel, Rufus, El Fuerte, and Crimson Viper. And we've also got some characters you might have heard of but have never actually seen before, like Goken, his uh, Rune 10's master, is now in the game. 
Crimson Viper. She's got some martial arts training, which is sort of beefed up by her battle suit, which has sort of electrified knuckles and boots that shoot flame. And people like Honda, I think, are very strong against Crimson Viper. Whereas players that need to be a little more aggressive, like a Rue or Ken, can really end up getting tricked. Rufus is another one of our great new characters. He learned his martial arts via correspondence school. He can generate pressure almost better than anybody else. He throws his weight around, literally. He's got what we call the falcon kick, which is a dive kick. You can jump into the air and sort of cut off his jump arc, the down and forward motion, and he dives right on top of you. He's a bit of a clown, but uh, is a legitimate threat as a character. Goken is another character who you sort of heard about in Street Fighter history, but is brand new in terms of being playable. He's the master of Ruin Ten. You sort of see some of the roots of some of their moves in his fighting style. His ultra is the mother of all uppercuts. El Fuerte, yes. He's a luchador as well as a great chef. I call him the hardest working man in Street Fighter 4, because you're putting in twice as many inputs as the other guy. You're flying all over the screen. As a tournament player, I can definitely see myself playing a lot of these new characters, and that's, that's actually how my little cockroach brain thinks. And game companies seem to have this idea that if they send us ridiculous swag, we will somehow remember their game and possibly give it a 5 out of 5. Except Microsoft, they know we like money. So where do all the trinkets and knickknacks go? The Home Swag Network, of course. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Home Schwag Network. Now, all the items we're going to be looking at today were sent to us to promote the biggest games of 2008. First up, we have this beautifully rendered, perfect dark sector faceplate. Now, if you were interested in sporting this beautiful faceplate, then you don't really care who knows that you love dark sector. I have three. I love you, dark sector. It figures. Well, next we have an item that's going to appeal to everybody who's interested in pimp culture. Um, this is a Pursuit Force pimp cup. Now, it is high quality, dishwasher safe plastic. And we'll even throw in one of these when you buy anything. Or if you just call, I mean, seriously, we have like 10,000 of these things. These are very fashionable StarCraft II sweatbands. So now you can. All right, right now I have something really special for you guys. I have some Kane and Lynch prescription medication. Oh, oh, we have a caller. Everybody's not exciting? Yeah, can I get 5,000 of those pill things? Adam, is that you? Hang this on your door and no girl will ever enter, I promise you. We all know Warhammer Online is very big right now. You can also catch up on everything by reading the official novelization. Now this is Warhammer Online, Age of Reckoning. This is definitely a must read for any gamer out there. Let's read some passages. Daughter of Verena, let your light be our guide in the darkness, said Carl. Carl must be a dwarf. His face alert and tense. It gets pretty steamy later in the book. This next beautiful item is from Dungeon Runners. I don't know why he has money coming out of his ass. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching the Home Schwag Network. Hello? Can I get express shipping on those pills? Bye. My voice doesn't sound like that at all. Anyway, it's time to get all the day's legitimate, non-drug-related news. Sorry, Michael Phelps. It's time for the gaming update. Oh, we're, we're just cheering for Street Fighter, huh? In the news already! Guess who tossed nearly 9 million banana peels in front of the competition? Yes, you are correct. 2008's top-selling game worldwide was none other than Mario Kart Wii. Sales tracking companies Interbrain, GFK Chart Track, and the NPD Group combined forces to produce 2008's top global markets report. Nintendo nabbed the top two spots, selling well over 8 million units of Mario Kart Wii and Wii Fit. Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto 4 sold over 7 million units worldwide, while Smash Brothers Brawl and Call of Duty World at War rounded out the top five. 
Next, the rumors were true. DJ Hero does exist. In an interview with CNBC, Activision CEO Bobby Kotick confirmed they are, in fact, working on a new rhythm-based turntable game called DJ Hero. Kotick says the game will allow players to spin discs and mix music in competitive play. But, more importantly, the game is expected to be released later this year. I got my glow sticks! That was for the guy over there. He knows who he is, that's right. Finally, is Disney working on a new Tron video game? Well, I know Mr. Sark thinks so. Variety's blog, The Cutscene, recently sprouted a rumor that Disney Interactive Studios is prepping a new Tron game. Now, details are still a little bit scarce, but the move would make sense considering Disney is hard at work on the franchise's film sequel, Tron 2. The movie is tentatively scheduled for release in 2011, which gives developers plenty of time to hammer out a game. Well, that's it for today's gaming update. For the latest news, be sure to check out our website, g4tv.com slash xplay. Stick around. There's more gameplay and beatdowns. That's Morgan and I's relationship coming up in just a little bit. Coming up on X-Play, the Hellgas return in the second half of our Killzone 2 review. Be here for the word on multiplayer and our final score. Then, Street Fighter 4 is upon us, and we'll tell you all about the new characters coming to the console version. Find out who's strong, who's fast, and who's getting their ass handed to them. Plus, Fallout 3 is already a modern classic, and after the break, we'll show you how to mod the game on your PC. Don't move. <laughs> a good chance that Street Fighter 4 is being played right now. And those players are probably going to pick up the console version and kick your ass all over the place. But there are characters who are exclusive to the home edition, giving you just a shred of a chance. Here are the fighters you need to know about. Are you ready for this? So there's also characters coming back from previous Street Fighter games, like Dan. Dan was from the Alpha series in Street Fighter games and was actually put in by Capcom as sort of a prank on SNK who they felt like their characters were getting a little too close. And so put in Dan, who's uh, definitely another comical character who, you know, he's got a fireball like Rune Ken, but his fireball kind of fizzles out. Even when he throws you, he sort of can't quite get you over his shoulder on the first try. I did it, Father! Cammy's a definite fan favorite and actually won a poll on the Capcom Unity website asking the fans which character they'd love to see in Street Fighter 4 and Ono-san was uh, gracious enough to actually put her in the game. She got a great new dive kick, which I think is going to be really powerful, so look out for that. Stay long originally found in Super Street Fighter 2 and he's of course a classic sort of Chinese martial artist. He seems sort of tweaked out in Street Fighter 4. Maybe he needs a little Ritalin or something. <laughs> Street Fighter is where fighting began, and it's you know set the world on fire, and now it's back with all these great new characters. It's super dynamic cooking time! And the game's really done a great job, I think, of respecting the roots of Street Fighter, pulling some classic characters from the original games as well as 2 and uh, the Alpha series, trying to do right by the fans. But the great new mechanics, it's a brand new day. Zone 2 review is coming up. Plus, we are gonna dig up some of the most the, the best mods for the PC version of Fallout 3. But first, you guys should take a shot at this trivia question. And of course, cheating is optional. How many playable characters have appeared in the main Street Fighter series? Is the answer A 40, 
B, 53, or C, 71? We'll have the answer after the break. Before the break, we asked you this question. How many playable characters have appeared in the main Street Fighter series? The answer is B, 53. This includes the characters in the Alpha series. back to X Play. Now the PC version of Fallout 3 is the best one out there thanks to mods. Long after you've completed every quest, there's still plenty to do thanks to some creative gamers. Here are some of our favorite ways to change the Wasteland experience. The post-holiday letdown can be rough. What do you have to look forward to? President's Day? Well, we're certainly not going to knock President's Day, but another great distraction is the Garden of Eden creation kit for Fallout 3 on the PC. You guys have been busy with Eden, and it shows, so here are just a few of the best mods we've seen so far. First, the Enclave Commander mod gives you the ability to call in support troops. And just like that, you've got an instant posse. You can really do some damage with the help of your new friends. And if that's not enough, you can always order a carpet bombing. Or maybe you'd like to mix things up with a little boss action. Now you can with the D6 Wasteland Boss Quest. Go one-on-one -on -one with an irradiated scorpion or take on a mutated death clock. They're big, they're bad, and they're mod. You can even play some new quests thanks to the W Reality Haven mod. In addition to the quests, it's got new models, equipment, and NPCs. Bye! Sure, it's got a few bugs, but it's a great really? start, and given some yeah. time, it'll be really amazing. Bye. And your game will finally be complete with the lightsaber mod. It's such a versatile weapon, plus it looks pretty cool and reduces your enemies to a pile of dust. It's also a surefire way to impress the ladies, if there were any. So keep creating and perfecting. You're doing a good job, but we know you're holding out on us. Now, earlier we watched you through Killzone 2's campaign. While it's solid, it's not long. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, love being juvenile. So that means the multiplayer better be good. Here's the second part of our review. No question that Killzone 2 is a solid campaign mode. What are the multiplayer, you ask? Can it possibly live up to the hype? Well, good news, Sony fanboys. The online component of Killzone 2 is actually better than the single-player adventure. Guerrilla Games stripped away the ability to grab cover, which forces you to get creative. Instead of flat environment, the maps manage to integrate plenty of vertical elements. They feature so many catwalks, ramps, and banisters, they make the art director of Space Mutiny jealous. The main mode of multiplayer is called Warzone, and it's essentially a fast-paced collection of different game types. Perfect for the jaded FPS gamer in all of us, this system keeps things moving and ensures that you won't get bored. You can also accumulate experience points, which is perfect for activating that desperate trigger inside of yourself that wrong-headedly correlates repetitive hand motion with a sense of accomplishment. Oh, and also, you can use them to unlock character classes, which is rad. We like the ability to form a four-person squad within your team, so you can voice chat with your closest pals and spawn at the location of your squad leader. It's nice touches like that that set this apart from other multiplayer experiences on the market. However, we did find that the control wasn't quite as tight as we hoped for. Compared to similar FPSs, the reaction time in Killzone 2 is very slightly slower. We gladly trade some of the flashy graphics for quicker control. But we're willing to forgive it since the multiplayer and single player modes combine like Voltron to create an incredible experience. Killzone 2 is a 5 out of 5. Tomorrow on X Play.
Who doesn't love a shield with blades hooked to a chain? Rygar returns and we have your review. Plus, we break the third plane and make PC games come to life. X-Play goes hands-on with NVIDIA's new 3D technology. Then, a bombed-out DC may not seem cozy, but it's home to us. We'll tell you the top five things we love about Fallout 3. And later in the week, we've got our exclusive hands-on demo of the new Watchmen game, Wanted, Weapons of Fate, and the new shooter, Eat Lead, The Return of Matt Hazard. Don't miss it every night at 8. All right, don't go. There's more of us coming up. Thanks for watching X-Play.